In 2007, the University of Manchester set up the Equity and Merit Scholarship Programme to support talented but economically disadvantaged students from some of the world's poorest countries. Since it began, more than 200 exceptional individuals from Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda and Bangladesh have all had the opportunity to study a Masters in Manchester. These are just some of their inspiring stories. To celebrate 10 years of Equity and Merit, we thought it would be a great idea to come to Uganda and to Tanzania and meet some of our graduates and see what they're doing now and see how their time in Manchester has really had an impact on their careers, in their workplace and with their wider community. I am. It's so good. Hello. My name is Anne Auma and I'm an Equity and Merit Scholar. I graduated from the University of Manchester with a Master's in Immunology and Immunogenetics in 2013. Every day a child in Uganda dies from malaria and many more children die from malaria worldwide. I want to lead research in Uganda and I want to address the infectious disease burden because those are all diseases that have been researched for years but we still haven't solved the puzzle. A four hour trip from Malago Hospital Bukala Island is in a remote location on Lake Victoria. We met up with Kenneth to visit his hybrid solar power plant, which is transforming the lives of Bukala's residents. Without electricity, life is very difficult. You're primarily in the dark. You have no, no what, what, what the rest of the world is thinking. My name is Kenneth Kahuma. I did a MSc Electrical Power Systems Engineering at the University of Manchester. The problem Uganda is facing currently is limited access to electricity. This means that other sectors such as education, health and water are affected as well. One of the ways we're looking at to solve this power problem is to have solar grids such as this. As you can see, the, the infrastructure here has improved so much in the sense that the plant has a knock-on effect on other development of our infrastructure. We had to look at the water system and the solar system here is used to treat the water that supplies the community around here and health centers that is improved medication that is better delivery from others and at the same time also the school system has improved as well because children can study for longer hours as opposed to waiting for the sun cycle. It's troubling to think that a trip to the dentist might result in you catching a disease like HIV AIDS or typhoid but in Uganda this is a very real risk. In the capital city, Kampala, we spoke to Dr. Winnie Nasolo, who's tackling the problem head on. As a dental surgeon, I wanted to go to the University of Manchester to do a virology related degree to see how I can be able to contribute to the reduction of the risk of getting HIV AIDS from a dental clinic. I wanted to study and be able to mitigate some of these fears that the patients have. Winnie, tell us what you learnt in Manchester and what you brought back to your work here in Kampala. Um, before going to Manchester for this degree, we used to take infection control as just a by the way in Uganda, especially for my department, the dental department. So when I came back from my degree, um, I learnt a lot of how it means to, 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 to prevent infection from getting from one patient to another. So what we do is every after a patient, we disinfect the dental chair with 100% absolute ethanol, from there to chlorhexidine, mm -hmm. dulcanate, and then to the autoclave. It makes me so proud to see patients coming in, get a good service, and yet it's for free. This is dentistry. In the slums just outside Kampala, poor roads liable to flooding, inadequate housing, and limited access to water and electricity are just some of the problems the people are facing. Most of the settlements um, around the towns have been developing in a haphazard manner. And also you find that the government doesn't provide uh, much needed services. I was the recipient of the Alan Gilbert Scholarship. And uh, through their generous support, um, I was able to do my one year program, my one year master's uh, urban planning program. We're now touching communities, we're building settlements, and we're changing mindsets of how people live in this neighborhood. The house is, is fairly more affordable than the houses here because uh, to build a typical house here you'd spend about um, 17,000 US dollars really? years to wow. build the same house. And this costs This one here much? is 5,000 US dollars to, to build this. Wow. The purpose of the prototype is one, to, to share 
ideas of how to actually build this house in a much better way, in a much more economically um, affordable way, uh, in a much more environmentally friendly way, uh, and also on our part as professionals, we were testing out this innovation and seeing if it can actually work. Our next destination was Dar es Salaam, a short flight away in neighbouring Tanzania. Here we met Ray Kilio, who's using the skills he gained in Manchester to make a difference to the city's people. Dar es Salaam is the one of the biggest city in East Africa and the biggest in, uh, in Tanzania with a population of more than 4 million people. I did uh, construction project management in the University of Manchester and I'm now working with the Strabag International Company as a civil engineer. We faced a, a big problem of uh, traffic movements in this city. There was a, a lot of chaos and so engineers came up with, uh, with this solution of uh, constructing a, a bus rapid transit project to facilitate the transport around the city. I can see a lot of people using the buses. There are traders and people going to market. People from, uh, from, from all sorts of life, they are using the system. It's not that, that, that expensive. There are more than uh, one, uh, 140 buses that are running per day, with more than 150,000 people per day, it's, uh, which is a very big number. And I think number will grow as the buses will be added as well. One of my friends knew that I was looking for the opportunity to go for further studies. And he told me about the uh, equity and merit scholarship from the University of Manchester. My friend saw the ad for the scholarship. When I looked at the advertisement, I was excited initially, and then I got cold feet. Here I was, a medical doctor. I've just gone into the lab. I did not have much experience. All I had was passion and a few dreams. But when I received that email that had been chosen, I was very, very happy and I was ecstatic. I didn't know what to expect. And I just prepared myself for the journey that was about to start. In Manchester, I learned a lot of things. For instance, time management, dealing with challenges in life. It gives me the confidence to actually face any challenge. I no longer see them as problems, I see them as challenges to be solved. I appreciated the Manchester degree so much. I was more confident and people looked up to me very highly. For example, my family, they're so proud of me because they're like, you, you are flag bearer for the whole clan. We've never had anyone doing a master's. When you came back from Manchester, did you look at things differently when you came to do this project? When I came back, it allowed me to, to reposition my career and look at, uh, at developing um, settlements in a much more sustainable way. It makes you look at what happens between these groups of houses. Do they have a shop to buy something at? Do they have clean water that they can use? And when the shelter is secure, people usually use it to jump uh, different barriers in society. It increases on their mobility in society. Five years down the road, I'll be sharing my knowledge across the region and helping other town planners and other town councillors to build much better cities much more uh, sustainable cities. The foundation that the University of Manchester has laid for me has been very good. That's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing, helping solve the puzzle of vaccine research and eradicating infectious diseases in Africa. Equit and Merit Scholarship has, uh, has, uh, has made a tremendous change into my life. It has made a, a big difference in my career, a big difference in my experience, a big difference in my family and my society as well. The scholarship programme is unique to the University of Manchester and what we're doing is something that's special. It's linked to social responsibility and it's about giving students an opportunity to get a master's in Manchester and take that skills and learning back to their home countries and really make a difference in their own workplace and in the wider community. So of course I would definitely want to thank the donors but also to, to share the message that they're opening doors. They're opening doors for uh, the professionals here, for city builders, uh, people like myself, planners and architects and engineers who want to build uh, this nation. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the donors at large out there who contribute to the scholarship of equity and merit. We have so many people who are bright, so many people who are intelligent, but would never ever afford to come to such universities to study and 
and get skills. It has changed my life so much. I see things differently. My approach to life is so different. This has allowed me to set my own goals as well and to dream bigger than I had thought possible before. Everything started when I attained that scholarship and when I went to study in the UK and it's because of you that I've been able to be this person that I am today. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.